So in environments where ice dominates the transport of sediment, deposition usually doesn't occur until the ice melts. The sediment that the ice is transporting is suspended in the ice because of its very high viscosity and its laminar flow behavior. And so it's, it ends up as sediment uh, only when the ice actually is removed, which happens during melting. Okay. So there, there are a number of things that happen and, and where that ice melts do, does a lot to determine um, uh, what the characteristic of the deposits actually look like. Okay, so if we have a slope here and uh, we have the glacier on it, it often has a steep front. Uh, because it's very viscous, it can maintain that front. Uh, and then we have sediment in the glacier. Because it's a laminar flow and very viscous, the size of the sediment inside the ice is unsorted. It is a huge range in grain sizes, ranging from that rock flour that comes from grinding the bits of rock together into giant boulders. Maybe some of them just sort of fell onto the ice from mountains below, and then some grains can also get plucked off the bottom and trained in the flow here. Okay. So we're starting with uns unsorted sediment. And if the ice just starts melting, all of that sediment uh, just falls out of the ice. Now when the liquid water um, flows away, uh, the, it can transport some of that sediment. But sometimes, let's extend our glacier onto this flat area here. All right, so we have grains of all sizes here. If you get a chunk of the ice just melting and the liquid water, say, filters in, so this is the melt water. So it goes into the groundwater. Here, all of those grains just get accumulated in a pile. All right, so this would produce a deposit where we have all sorts of grains in an unsorted mix. All right. So if the ice just melts and there's no transport by water, liquid water, Right, we get this unsorted mix, and it's called the dia mictite. So dia has two mict as class, ite as rock, when it gets lithified. Right, so that refers, what this means is that there's just this really, really huge range in grain size uh, in the deposits. Okay. So, often, the ground, the water doesn't all sink into the ground, and you end up with water flowing uh, downstream. And if you have the liquid water flowing downstream, you transport the grain sizes uh, based on the flow speed, and so the grain sizes. Uh, uh, become sorted uh, when they're transported uh, by the liquid water. Okay. So if you have if you have very large boulders and a mix of cobbles that aren't 
um, small enough for the water to transport, what's left behind can be uh, poorly sorted. But the grains that are actually uh, transported in the turbulent flow, the liquid water, follow the, the Holstrom diagram and you end up with uh, a better sorting of those grains through time. Um, in the next couple, uh, a little bit later in the quarter, we're going to be talking about rivers and often the rivers that are associated with this end up being braided rivers because there's a very large number of large clasts. So just keep in mind that braided rivers are very common uh, it, when uh, at, the, at the toe of uh, glaciers. So sometimes the topography is such that the melting water from the glacier ponds into a lake and sometimes glaciers and ice sheets flow uh, into the ocean. And so there's a significant difference in the depositional process uh, between rivers and lakes uh, and the ocean. And so in this particular, if you, if you have our glaciers here and all the sediment, and one of the things that happens is that the, the lake water is always above freezing because it's liquid. And so often the sediment just drops, as the ice melts, the sediment just drops to the bottom here. And you end up, again, with a diamictite. And often, in this particular case, the, there's a big sheet of diamictite. And if it, you can demonstrate it's from a glacier, it would be um, called till, a till sheet. Okay? So till is uh, the term that's often used for, for glacial sediment. And that, that geometry contrasts to what happens when the ice melts um, just in the zone here. And a lot of times what it creates is uh, moraines. And these are these are tend to be uh, more like piled up uh, zones of diamictite. And often they are influenced by the details of the glacial flow themselves. So um, one of the things that's, that uh, happens when the ice goes into the lake is it often produces icebergs. Uh, and those icebergs can transport sediment from the glacier out into the middle of the lake. And in general, it's the same thing happens um, when you form the, the till sheet here the, the stones from this just drop to the bottom of the lake. Now, normally the flow speed in a lake is very, very low, and so uh, large clasts are not transported out into the middle of the lake. Um, and so when you see, say, a cobble-sized class that's sitting um, in the mudstones in the lake, uh, Ice rafted debris is one of the possible in interpretations for that. So, okay. So the other thing about these lakes is that the 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 rock flower that's really common stays in suspension, but it also settles out. So you end up with a lot of clay sized grains. But they're made up of the bedrock, so they're clay-sized lithic clasts, as opposed to the clay minerals that form from uh, the chemical weathering. Uh, and I should label this as a dropstone. Sometimes they're called the lone stone. And the reason for that is drop stone implies a process, whereas lone stone is, uh, is, is descriptive. And so the final thing that's really common in these, in these settings is uh, turbidites. And that's because the, the rate of sediment accumulation is highest right where the ice is melting, and the sediment can accumulate there 
um, and the slopes can become over steepened and uh, you commonly get uh, turbidites. So we'll talk about the facies in a, in a later video, and I'll summarize these, um, the, the types of deposits that you tend to see. The, the key points here are that um, when the ice melts, because it's a laminar flow, it leaves behind unsorted sediment of all the grain sizes from, from clay size to boulder that the ice is carrying. However, as it melts, it produces liquid water and that liquid water can transport the grains and um, uh, sort the grain sizes out and you end up with deposits that are going to be in facies that are associated with, for example, braided rivers, lakes, or marine environments with an inherited signature from the processes of transport within the ice. Thanks for watching.